coming up on Murky Seb's Wild Underwater Adventures. On today's adventure, we are exploring some more rivers around the Lake Sampson Vale area, which is located about 45 minutes north of Brisbane. We are hoping that in one of these rivers, there's a large number of healthy native fish we can get a good look at. You never know what's living in any particular river until you get in there and have a good look. So come along on this adventure as we investigate what creatures call these rivers home. Our first stop was at this bridge with an interesting assortment of beautiful rocks. So we stopped and I had a good look at them before trying to find some water. This would all be filled with water after it rains, but as it hadn't rained in a long time, there was hardly any water here at all. But I managed to find a small pool of water and I went to have a look if there was anything living in this tiny amount of water. And I was amazed. There was lots of movement and clearly some fish in here. So I got in there and had a good look around. Unfortunately, on closer inspection, I realized these weren't native fish. They were in fact a mix of swordtails and gambusia. Swordtails are native to Central America and were introduced into our waterways by some inconsiderate humans, releasing them from their aquariums into the local rivers. This has happened in multiple locations across Australia and they outcompete the natives for food and can easily take over a river like this one. They eat algae, small crustaceans and insects. The males have long tails that look like a sword with colourful green and red bodies. The females are less colourful and don't have a sword for their tail. There wasn't any more water here to explore so we moved on to the next location. And on the way, we happened to spot this large, deep body of water by the side of a busy road. So we quickly pulled over to investigate. On closer inspection, I noticed the water was clear, so I decided to put in my camera and see what was hiding under the surface. There was this tiny water lily that will grow up into some large water lilies one day. And off to the side were all these little fish swimming around, which on closer inspection turned out to be empire gudgeons. Empires are a native fish that I was very excited to find, as I've been wanting to film these guys ever since I started making videos. Empire gudgeons range from Northern Australia all the way down the East Coast to the bottom of New South Wales. They also live in New Guinea, these ones are only young empires, but when they get bigger and it's time for the breeding season, the males will go bright orangey red all over their face and abdomen. And their fins turn orange and black with white stripes and spots going along them. The females don't become colorful like the males, but still look very beautiful. When I was a child, I would go to the local river and investigate what lived in there by going through with a net in my hand and seeing what I could catch. And one day, I found a bright orange fish that was one of the most beautiful fish I had ever seen. That turned out to be my first encounter with an empire gudgeon. And ever since, I wanted to learn more about this species, but I've never managed to catch them again. I've always wanted to capture them on film as well. And today, I'm very pleased to have achieved that goal. As you can see, this stream is very close to a busy road. So I went over to investigate if there were any fish hanging around that bridge. At first, I couldn't see any fish swimming about. As I waited, trying my best not to move or startle anything living in the creek, it really paid off because look how many empires were over by this bridge. 
The majority of the empires are still quite young, which will move upstream as they grow bigger. The breeding season for empires ranges from spring to autumn. The female lays her eggs in rows of about 3,000 eggs that stick to various surfaces like plants, logs, rocks and sand. The male then fertilizes the eggs and guards them until they hatch, which takes about two weeks. After that, the babies are swept downstream to the estuaries, where they grow up and then migrate back upstream when they're big enough. They are excellent at keeping mosquitoes under control and also like to eat small crustaceans, insects and plant matter. Whilst I was busy filming all these awesome gudgeons, my friend said there's a water dragon over here. So I carefully went over towards where he was pointing, being really slow and gentle so I didn't spook the dragon. Water dragons are mostly found along the east coast of Australia, and this one is quite young, only a few years old. If it's a male, then when they grow up, they will have big pinky red markings on their neck whereas the females don't tend to have those markings. Little dragons like these have been observed jumping and eating mosquitoes flying around their heads. They also have an omnivorous diet and tend to eat insects, mollusks, crustaceans and algae. Water dragons are typically found in large numbers comprised of several females and juveniles of various ages with a big male who will defend their territory from other males. They communicate through a variety of head bobbing, saluting and licking things. The actual meanings of these displays is not fully understood. They can also stay submerged for up to an hour before needing to come up for a breath. Let's leave the lovely dragon now and get back to what's happening underwater. Look at that enormous school of fish off in the distance. We will try to get a closer look at them shortly. But first, let's look at what else is living in here. We see some more empires, but unfortunately, we see a female Gambusia in the middle of the screen. I was hoping this river was going to be just natives, but obviously that's too much to ask. But thankfully, this part of the river is mostly natives. There's a really good amount of these empire gudgeons and some firetail gudgeons here as well. Although they look very similar to empire gudgeons at this size. Some of the empires though, are displaying their beautiful butterfly-like fins. Their fins remind me of the orange, white and black monarch butterfly. I haven't encountered so many of these fish in one place before. It's a really satisfying experience finding so many empires all together. And by the water's edge getting a drink was this lovely honeybee. I often see bees down by the water getting a drink. They have to be very careful not to fall in and get wet, otherwise they can't fly back to their hive. I'm always happy to see these beautiful creatures, even though they aren't natives. Now it's time to get back and investigate what that large school of fish in the background was. And wow, this is even better than I was expecting. In this school, not only do we have a bunch of bright silver sea mullet, but also some beautiful Pacific blue eyes. These are baby mullet and are quite common in freshwater rivers that link up to the ocean because the mullet spawn in salt water, laying between 500,000 and 2 million eggs, which after about a week, the babies make their way into a coastal environment. There they spend about a year around the coast before they head up into the freshwater streams to grow out in relative safety for the majority of their lives. Mullet feed mainly on plankton, dead plants, insects, mosquito larvae, crustaceans, algae, and anything that lives on the river or sea floor. As mullet feed by sucking up the top layer of sediment, which contains all sorts of food. That then gets filtered through a special gill raker, 
that filters out all the debris as the water passes over their gills, allowing them to make sure they just get the food they want from the riverbed. They can reach a maximum size of 1.2 meters and weigh up to eight kilos. They can also live for roughly 16 years. They can also breed after they are about four years old. Unfortunately, these beautiful creatures are greatly declining due to humans killing as many as we possibly can to make a small number of people rich, despite the efforts of marine biologists trying to explain how important mullet are as a species and shouldn't be killed. Also, the loss of habitat, pollution, and taking away their sources of food has led to their decline. It's really important not to kill mullet as they don't deserve it. They are wonderful creatures. The other fish are Pacific blue eyes, which are a native fish that can tolerate quite salty water as well as fully fresh water. The males have a beautiful black, white, and yellow fins. The females are similar in body shape, but don't have those colorful fins. They of course both have those vibrant blue eyes and that's where they get their name. I hope you enjoyed learning about all these awesome creatures. I hope you'll come along on our next adventure. And until then, keep it murky.